Jeff Rowe from Two Hacks Garage. Well, I'm going to continue this series on tearing down this Pontiac 400 that I've been doing for the past, I don't know, five or six videos. We originally started with identifying it, kind of looking at what we have, and starting the teardown process the right way. Why do I say the right way? Well, it's the way that Jimmy taught me. It's the way that it ensures you know what you're doing. You're doing things correctly when trying to identify the parts, not break other parts, and also look for some wear. As you saw in the last video, I showed you the way to properly clean an engine block. And that proper way to clean an engine block, I know, like I said, might sound controversial, but it is getting most of the gunk off this that you can and actually take it to the machine shop for a hot tank. Now, what's this video about? Well, it's just one more step if you want to call cleaning things before you actually go to the machine shop. However, there is going to be one more step that you don't have to do that I'm going to show you in another video that helps remove rust and it involves science. Hope you guys paid attention to all those classes growing up. But in this video, this step I'm going to do, most reputable machine shops are going to do it, but in some cases they might not. So when you go to a machine shop, you might actually ask what their process is when they're actually cleaning your engine block, your mains, crank, whatever you take them to get actually degreased in that hot tank. What am I going to do, guys? Well, I'm going to chase threads. I know I've already shown you this multiple times, but to continue with the theme of this video series, I'm going to show you again and go in a little bit of detail to really look out what you're or really look what you're going to be doing and why. So with that, guys, this video series or this part of this video series is pretty simple. It's just one more additional step you can do to make sure things are clean the proper way. Like I said, when you go to a machine shop, always ask them what their process is to clean that engine block. Like I said, most reputable places will do this, but to ensure it's being done, might as well save a few bucks, do it yourself, get the results you're desired for. So when you go to assemble this engine, everything's right. With that guys, I'm gonna show you what tools we're using today. It's actually pretty simple. See you in a minute. All right, guys, like I've said, I've already shown this in a few videos, but you know what? To stick with this theme of tearing this Pontiac 400 down correctly and getting it ready to be machined to be built in the future, this step I'm going to show you again. Call it chasing threads. It's actually a very simple process. And what it basically does is you're going through every threaded hole on this engine block, top, side, bottom, rear, you name it, to clean out the threads. Yes, I've cleaned this very well with oven cleaner, degreaser, scrubbed it, pressure washed it, you named it multiple times. However, there is still gunk on those holes. Why is it important to get all that out? Well, it's simple. When you go to machine, or when you go to put this thing back together, a lot of these holes do have proper torque specs. If these are dirty, you're not going to actually be able to properly torque these down. And if that doesn't happen, well, especially on your mains and on your cylinder heads, it can create massive issues like, well, cylinder heads don't torque these down right. You might blow a head gasket and they might leak. On your mains, you're going to come into some bearing issues. So what am I using today, guys? It's quite simple. I got this Icon tap and die set. Get picked it up at Harbor Freight. Um, my opinion, Icon for the weekend warrior, do-it-yourself guy home engine builder, well, they make a quality product. And this one here is their SAE kit. They do make it in metric. Well, it's pretty simple, guys. You got your different taps and dies and all that. Well, what you're gonna do is you're gonna use these in all your different holes. You're not going real hard. And all you're doing is going through there, chasing the threads to get all the gunk out. The other tools I'm using with this, I'm using an Irwin tap handle. The reason I'm doing this and not a drill, well, you don't want to force things. You actually want to feel it. So when you're going through there, you want to actually feel what you're doing so you don't cross thread anything. To be honest with you guys, if you use a drill, you can go too fast. You can actually break off one of your taps. And at that point, well, you got a mess on your hands. The other things I got, well, just a can of brake clean and a rag. The only reason I have that, pretty simple. These are going to get very, very dirty. And when these get very, very dirty, you're going to need to spray them off and wipe them down. So yeah, guys, it's a very simple process. Minimal tools required. But like I said, it's just one more step you can take before you go to machine shop to make sure things are actually clean, cleaned out before it gets hot tanked, before any machine work. So when you're ready to build this, this thing is absolutely clean, ready to build, and you get the desired outcome you want. Something reliable, something powerful, and something fun. And you know what? You don't want to second guess anything. That's the name of the game. Do it right the first time. So with that, guys, we're going to show you the process. Be right back.
All right, guys, this is pretty simple. I'm gonna just show a couple examples on here and then just put on time lapse and start going through everything. Anything pops up, of course, I'll stop and explain it. <clears throat> this process is actually pretty simple. If you look in this here, you can see it's still black, gunky, and all that. <clears throat> all that needs to be removed. Every single bolt in here needs to have the threads chased. So it's pretty simple, guys. You need to know the size of the bolt that goes in there. If you don't know it, well, you can refer to your factory manual, go online, and all that. Then from there, you're going to have to go to your taps and die set, and you're going to have to find the proper size for that. You're going to need to know the diameter and also the thread pitch on these. Um, from there, guys, actually pretty simple. You're going to put that in your chuck, and you're going to chase these threads. However, if you look, I don't have the handle connected. The reason being is I want to start it by hand to make sure it goes straight. You can see it has that tapered edge. Well, I want to make sure it goes in there straight and it's not going to cross thread anything. And you know what? It can mess everything up. So right there feels pretty comfortable that it's not cross threading and it's actually going to go through the threads nicely. Well, from there, well, it's pretty simple. I'm going to put the handle on it. I'm going to lock it into place. And then from there, guys, well, it's quite simple. I'm going to go through. I'm going to turn it by hand. If you look, I'm not going real fast. It's nice and smooth. And the nice part about that is, is too, if you look here, it does have a 3 8 for a 3 8 drive ratchet, make it a little bit quicker. But make sure you don't get anything with a whole lot of leverage. Like I said, you actually want to feel this so you don't mess anything up. So that's why I use this handle. So you just turn it, go through it. And mind you, some of these holes go into a water jacket, some of them don't. You'll feel it bottom out if it doesn't uh, go into a water jacket and it actually has an end to it. So right about there is where it's wanting to stop. So I'm going to play it safe and I'm going to back this up. We're going to show you what kind of gunk actually comes out of this. Like I said, you don't want to force it. <clears throat> you want to take your time. You want to do it right. This is a timely process, but the results are worth it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. <clears throat> so if you look there, you can see a bunch of nasty gunk that came out. Now, Look at that hole compared to what it looked like before. It's a lot cleaner. That's how you do it, guys. You're going to do it on every single one of them. And in fact, the reason I have the brake cleaner, simple, because when I'm done doing a hole, look at all that nastiness. I am going to clean this. Tell you what, guys, I'm going to throw it on time lapse, go through these, stop when I need to, explain some more things. See you in a few. So I got all the cylinder head bolt holes cleaned out. Um, like I said, you're not forcing anything. You're just going by feel. Um, you can see here, this is what you can expect with each hole. Um, I am cleaning it um, after I clean each hole. I did show a rag and some brake cleaner. Uh, sometimes it is easier, guys, if you take like a wire brush and just scrape out all that gunk. Make sure you don't do it over your engine. Um, yeah, that's what you can expect. You just want to go through each one and don't force it. Make sure you line the tool up right, turn it by hand, feel it. Yeah, get them all clean. So this side's done. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do the other side and continue on. See you in a few.
All right, so here's a good little bit of information here. Um, you see these holes here? Well, those holes actually go all the way through to the cam journal. So when you're doing these holes, look to see if they actually go all the way through. If they do go all the way through, you want to try to get that tap all the way through that to push that grime out. Now remember, we've gone through this with spraying, degreasing multiple, multiple, multiple times, and they've even gone through the holes. But here's what's interesting. Those threads were extremely dirty and gunked up. Now, watch this. Look at that. It's pretty gross. And in fact, I pushed a big chunk of deposits through that hole down into that cam journal. Now, this is a valley pan uh, for the Pontiac 400, and that's what that bolts to. But as you can see, look at that. You see that right there? If you zoom in, that funk. Yeah, that was in that hole broken loose by that tap. So yeah, if you can get this through all the way, go through all the way and push all that gunk out. So as you see here, that's dirty. What I'll probably do um, is I'll probably degrease this again before I do the next step, which is a surprise, involves science. But as far as this is concerned, we're going to keep on chasing the threads. See you soon. Well, we're going to call that a wrap. You know what? Like I said, I've shown this in previous videos. I just wanted to keep the theme of how to properly disassemble an engine, and that does include cleaning. So I covered the basics, what tools to use, how to do it, and get those threads clean. If you can tell when you're cleaning them, you're really not getting everything out. You're getting a whole bunch. You saw the greasy, grimy gopher guts come out, all the oil, rust, grease, contaminants, you name it. If you have a really dirty hole, you can go back through it. But to be honest with you guys, a reputable machine shop after they tank it the first time, before they machine it, they're going to pull it back out and they're going to go through that again. Because you know what? After it gets machined, it's literally going to go back in the hot tank. This is just one of those steps you can do on your own just to make sure things are being done right. Always consult with your machine shop and ask them the cleaning process to see if this is something they do. With that, if they don't, you can ask them to do it. it might cost you a little bit more money. But if you have the means, go ahead and take care of yourself before you actually go in there. As you saw, I went through every single thread, you name it, got it all cleaned out. Some of them I went through a couple times. These back ones here, you know what, I'm going to tackle those once it's off the engine stand. A couple hours worth of work really pays off. It's another one of those little processes you can do on your own, save a few bucks if needed. And really guys, it's one of those things where just like everything else, you want to make sure 
that you got everything clean, you wanna make sure it's done right. So when you put this together, it's gonna to perform flawlessly and it's gonna perform correctly. These holes do have a lot to do with your actual torquing down and you want those to be clean to get proper torque specs. So where are we going with this next? Well, it'll still be in my garage. It's not going to the machine shop yet because I'm gonna do a bonus video on something you can do to help remove rust off these engines. Water jackets, all the little galleys and all that, that do build up rust. You know what, you really can't get in there with the scrub rust. There is a scientific process you can do that is fun, a little bit of time consuming, can be messy, but you know what? It really helps remove rust. So in the next video, I'm gonna tell you what that is, show you how to use it, and show you the results. With that, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned something, and we'll see you in the next one. Later.